We begin by creating a Gantt chart template. Open a new Excel document and save it as my Gantt chart. Type in the column headings across the top, task, start date, number of days to complete, and stop date. Next, type in the generic tasks in column A, tasks A through E. Adjust column width and height or apply formatting if you wish. Now before we type in the start dates in column B, let's make sure the cells are formatted correctly. If they're not, it can cause a lot of problems with the chart. Select cells B2 through B6, right mouse click, select Format Cells on the menu, and in the Format Cells dialog box, click the Number tab, click Date, click on the date style you want, and click the OK button. Now you're ready to type the dates, 12-1-2009 through 12-5-2009. Column C, same thing. Let's format it first. Click the Number tab, click Number, and since we don't want a decimal point and zeros after our number, enter zero in the decimal place box, then click the OK button. Then type in the numbers 5, 6, 10, 9, and 4. Column D is a bit different. Instead of entering dates, we'll use a formula that calculates the dates. However, before entering the formula, Format the cells for the desired date style. Select cells D2 through D6. Once again, right mouse click and select Format Cells on the menu. Click the Number tab, click on Date, click on the date style you want, and click the OK button. In cell D2, enter the formula equals B2 plus C2 minus 1. Press Enter and the stop date is calculated. Copy the formula all the way down the column. Now that our table's completed, we're ready to create the Gantt chart. Select the data in cells A1 through D6. On the ribbon, click the Insert tab. Then in the Charts group, click Bar Chart, which opens the list of styles. At the top of the list under 2D Bar, click on the Stacked Bar Chart. We need to adjust the minimum and maximum values on the x-axis. The minimum value is the earliest date, the maximum value is the latest date. We begin by changing the two dates to the general number format. Select the start date and open the format menu. In the Format Cells dialog box, click the Number tab if it's not already selected. Click on General and then click OK. The date is now changed to General Format. Now for the maximum value. In this table, the latest stop date is in cell D5, not in the last cell in the table. Right-click on it and click Format Cells on the menu. Click the Number tab, click on General, and click OK. We're ready to adjust the x-axis. Click on the numbers along the bottom to select the x-axis. An outline shows it's selected. Right-click on it to open the menu, and then click Format Axis. Under Axis Options, next to Minimum, click inside the tiny circle next to Fixed. In the box next to it, enter the earliest start date in its general format, which is 40148. Next to Maximum, click inside the circle next to Fixed, and in the box next to it, enter the number for the latest stop date, 40159. Next to Major Unit, enter 1 or 2 since our table is so short. Under Vertical Axis Crosses, Click in the circle next to Axis Value and type in the minimum value 40148. Click the Close button. And now you can change the two general numbers back to their normal date format. Let's adjust the alignment of the numbers on the x-axis so they're not overlapping. Right-click on the x-axis and click Format Axis. On the left side of the Format Axis dialog box, click on Alignment. On the right side, Inside the box next to Custom Angle, type minus 45 and click the Close button. Next, we'll make changes to the vertical y-axis. Click on the tasks to select it. Right-click on it to open the menu and click on Format Axis. The values in our chart go from E to A. We want to reverse that. In the dialog box, click inside the checkbox next to Categories in Reverse Order. 
under horizontal access crosses, click in the circle next to at maximum category. This keeps our horizontal access at the bottom of the chart. Finally, click the close button. For this chart, we want to display only the middle part of the bars. We'll hide the parts we don't need. Click on the left side of any one of the bars, which selects them all. Now right click on them to open the format menu, then click on Format Data Series. On the left side of the dialog box, click on Fill. Then on the right, under Fill, click in the tiny circle next to No Fill. On the left side of the dialog box, click Border Color. And then on the right, click inside the circle next to No Line. Click the Close button. Now click on the farthest right portion of any of the bars to select them all. Right click on them and select Format Data Series. On the left side of the dialog box, click on Fill. Then on the right, under Fill, click the tiny circle next to No Fill. On the left side of the dialog box, click Border Color. On the right, click inside the circle next to No Line. Click the Close button. Finally, our chart looks like a Gantt. Before saving the template, we'll make a couple of style changes. Here, we click on the x-axis to select it and change the font size to 10. Click on the y-axis to select it and change it to bold text by clicking the bold button on the ribbon. Now let's add a title at the top of the chart. Click on one of the corners to select the entire chart. When it's selected, you'll see a soft outline and the chart tools appear on the ribbon. Under the chart tools, click the layout tab. In the labels group, click on chart title. On the drop down list, click above chart. Click inside the box to delete the words and type My Gantt Chart. Select the title and change the font style if you wish. Here we change it to Arial Narrow. Click outside the text box to get out of it. Let's delete parts of the legend. Click on the legend to select it. Then click on the word Start Date to select only those words and press the Delete key on your keyboard. Click on the legend again, then on the words Stop Date and press the Delete key on your keyboard. Now we're ready to save our template. Click on the clear upper right corner of the chart to select it. A soft outline surrounds the chart and the chart tools appear. Click on the Design tab and then on the Save as Template button. In the Save as Template window in the File Name box, type the name of your chart. That's it! In this next part, we'll apply our template to a project. We need to create a Gantt for the Kobe Building Production Schedule. First, we'll add the end date formula in the column just to the right. Now copy it all the way down the column, down through the last item on the schedule. You can format the new column to match the rest of the table, but it certainly isn't necessary. Next, select the data you wish to chart. On the ribbon, click the Insert tab, and then in the Charts group, click the tiny launch arrow. In the Insert Chart dialog box, click on the Templates button. When you hold your mouse pointer over the templates for a second or so, the name of the template appears. Click on the My Gantt Chart template to select it and click the OK button. We'll begin by changing the earliest date and the latest date to the general format. Next, right-click on the numbers along the bottom to select the x-axis and open the Format menu. Click Format Axis. Under Access Options, for the minimum, enter 39762, which is our earliest date. Next to Maximum, type 40333. Next to Major Unit, enter 25. Under Vertical Access Crosses, once again, type 39762 and click the Close button. And now you can change the two dates back to their normal format. We also want to change the title. Click and drag across the letters to select and then delete them. Type in the new title, Production Schedule for the Kobe Building. That's it! Make any other color or format changes you wish, or copy and paste it into a Word or PowerPoint document, just as you would any other chart. For help with Excel and Chart Basics, check out Easy Everyday Excel.